Hi guys, it's Tech Boy here with another video. This video is my top 5 iPhone 6 rumours as of late August 2014. So, let's get into it. Before I go into this video, I just want to go over a quick disclaimer like I have for my previous videos. This video was made mid to late August 2014. Check out the previous top 5, top 10 iPhone 6 rumor videos, which I'll have linked in the description below. And we're starting to get leaks for the 5.5 inch model in terms of circuit boards and displays and chassis and all that. There's still no rumors on a 4.0 inch iPhone 6 model, but I still hope they do release one for the people that do like that screen size and don't want a bigger iPhone. Announcement and release date is most likely going to happen on the morning of September 9th in America, with invitations out exactly a week earlier. So expect invitations and all that to be released and then all go all around the internet on the 2nd of September. And this is ranked based on recent rumours, how likely it will happen and what we as users want to see and what I personally think are the top five rumours that are circulated around the internet at the moment. So let's get into it. Number five is the non-visible technologies. So when I say that, I'm referring to the technologies inside the device that you can't necessarily see. So the LTE component or long-term evolution, which is the 4G cellular internet component, is likely to be updated to the Qualcomm that code modem which allows up to 150 megabits per second compared to 100 megabits per second on the iPhone 5s and I believe on the iPhone 5 and 5c as well so 50% increase but it's not going to support LTE advanced networks which supports up to 300 megabits per second and a 211ac Wi-Fi is highly rumored to come in the next iPhone which came with the max that were released last year because even my retina macbook pro has it's all built in and all that but obviously we don't have fast enough internet and all that to need it but it'd be good if they integrated in all of their ios devices this year at least so when people eventually get faster internet and then they upgrade their wireless routers and all that then they'll get more benefit out of it one gigabyte of ram is still expected in the next iphone which is the same as every iPhone since the iPhone 5, but I wish it were 2GB or 1.5GB, but then again, the software is optimised really well for the 1GB of RAM, so either they could have better optimization or add a bit more RAM. Honestly, I'm just thinking they should add more RAM because they've got a bigger device to put in because of the 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch models coming out. Also doubling of storage is wished for but the 5.5 inch model should at least be offered with 128 gigabytes of internal flash storage and there's rumors that were going around the internet a couple of days ago as of when I was recording this video. So number four is naming and release dates. So the 4.7 inch and the 5.5 inch models are likely to both be announced at the same event the 5.5 inch model is likely to be released at a separate time, hopefully before the before Christmas. Apple Insider suggests that the 5.5 inch model, the bigger of the two that you can see in the image on the screen, will be called the iPhone 6L. I'm not going to brag or anything, but what I do want to highlight is I did in fact say that the bigger iPhone will be called the iPhone 6L or if they called the 4.7 inch model the iPhone 6L, they would call the phablet the iPhone 6XL because of shirt sizes. I'll link my video of when I said that in the description below to give you proof because you can tell by the date I uploaded it and all that that I was one of the first to think all of the naming stuff through before everyone else, but there's no real glory in that. Anyway, number three is battery sizes. The iPhone 5S has the A7 processor chip and a 1560 mAh battery. The iPhone 6 4.7 inch model is expected to have an A8 chip with an 1810 mAh battery, which is a 16% increase. 
and the iPhone 6L or the Fablet will have the A8 chip as well, but a 2915 milliamp hour battery, so just shy of 3000, which is an 87% increase over the iPhone 5S. And the screens on these phones will obviously have a lot more pixels and all that on them, so the batteries need to be larger to accommodate for that. And the reason I say this is because the display is perhaps the most power sucking component of the device and all that. I mean sure, if you use your phone a lot like me and you would like check in your emails or something, every time you refresh your inbox or something and you get half a dozen messages, your phone's battery instantly goes down one percent. So there's times like that where the phone's battery goes down quickly, but strictly speaking, the screen is the most power hungry component of the device itself. So it's not going to be so much based on the size of the screen, but it's going to be more based on how many pixels are on that screen in relation to how big the battery is. There'll be more on that in just a moment. So number two, and one I've really wanted long time, and I'm sure everyone else has, is near-field communication. There's new documents being released, or at least circulating around the internet, suggesting that the iPhone 6 variants will in fact come with NFC, or near-field communication. So basically, if you've got the chip in your phone and you walk up to something and you tap your phone on it, it would react in some different way. Not very similar to iBeacons, but iBeacons is like if you're within a certain um, distance of a iBeacon object thing, whereas NFC is like only a couple of centimetres away from where you have the phone where you've got to tap onto something. I'm anticipating that Apple will announce a developer API for NFC in Xcode 6 for app developers when they announce the feature because they wouldn't have announced it back at WWDC because otherwise that would have given away that NFC was coming to the next iPhone and all that. It's rumoured to be exactly the same chip inside of which is included in the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 5 devices. If Apple does put NFC in the iPhone, then Android phones will benefit from Apple's announcement because developers will start to think more about this feature and it would more it would make the component on the majority of Android smartphones more useful because we know as a industry and all that everybody develops apps on the iPhone and iPad and iOS and all that originally and then if it's a massive hit they will most likely then go into development and then bring it out on the Android platform so if they were to do it on the iPhone and NFC implemented well into an application really took off then they would make a copy of that on Android and all that so I really hope that's what's gonna happen for Android devices and they should thank Apple if this all this whole industry of NFC usage and all that starts. And I'm hoping there's a toggle switch for it in the control center, and it, there should be if there's a bigger screen and they keep the toggle switches about the same size as they are at the moment. They'll have more space to put more controls in the control center, so they should have a toggle switch in there. And finally, number one is the screen resolutions. So 9 to 5 Mac released an article, a lot with everyone else on the internet, obviously, about what the new resolutions are going to be. And this was most recently, because the rumored resolutions are, at least if you compare it to the iPhone 5S, the 5S is a 1136 by 640, which was the same width but taller than the iPhone 4 and 4S because of the retina resolution that had. And that was a 326 pixels per inch and that many pixels. The iPhone 6 is rumored to have a 1472 by 828 pixel resolution. So you're expecting to get roughly 68% more pixels for that, resulted in 359 pixels per inch. So a slight increase, but it's going to be hardly noticeable, I reckon. The iPhone 6L is rumored to have a 2208 pixels by 1,242 resolution to basically stay on par with what the iPhone 6 is because there was an original look resolution for the iPhone 6 screen size and all that. They doubled that to get the resolution of the iPhone 6 
but they tripled that original number to get the iPhone 6L resolution. I, if I find the link for it, again, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. But the iPhone 6L is rumored to have 460 pixels per inch, and the number of pixels it's meant to have over the iPhone 5S, that's 377% more pixels, or more pixels than, for example, Samsung Galaxy Note 3, but obviously not compared to the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 if that ends up getting a Quad HD display. Batteries are expected to be 16% and 87% larger than the iPhone 5S, and if you compare 68% to 16% larger battery, and 377% more pixels and 87% larger battery, just from the display aspect alone, you don't think the battery is really going to improve, but it's all going to come down to re real world usage in order to compare battery life and all that. And this is completely ignoring the fact that it could be more energy efficient in terms of the display, iOS 8 itself, or the A8 processor, even though that's rumored to be 2.0 gigahertz, which will basically be up to twice as fast, probably similar to what they did with the A6 chip when they went from the A5, but it's hopefully going to be more energy efficient, but only use the real power of the A8 processor when needed. So I really hope they do optimize it for the battery even more, or have a more energy efficient display, because that would really sweeten the deal for people wanting to upgrade. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. The question for you, the audience, is just like last time, 4.7 or 5.5? You can let me know by leaving a comment below, and if you enjoyed this, please give a like, and if you choose to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter at techboy1212, that's the Twitter handle and the name of the page. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you later.